Good afternoon, everyone. I know we still have some people making their way into the room, but we have a, a full agenda. So in the interest of time, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, I want to welcome all of you to Convergence 2014 uh, and to our session where we're going to cover Microsoft Dynamics Retail. Uh, I am Michael Griffiths. I'm the Senior Industry Director for our Global Retail and Commerce Solutions. Uh, very fortunate to also have with us Ashvin Matthew, who's our General Manager. Uh, for retail and commerce, runs the entire R&D organization. Uh, and then also Jeff Blucher, who's a senior program manager on his team, and he'll be doing the driving uh, on a very cool demo that we have to show you some of the latest and greatest retail functionality that's coming uh, with retail and the, and the R3 release. We'll uh, quickly get out of the way the disclaimer that we do for all these sessions. Um, no recording, no video, uh, no photos, things of that nature. All of this content is being recorded, however, and will be available to you after, afterward through our official site. Um, so you'll be able to see what we present and go back through the material um, later on. So I want to set the stage from an agenda perspective, uh, talk a little bit about the retail landscape and sort of continue on the theme that you heard this morning with both Wayne and Kirill in the keynote as they were talking about all the change that's happening, um, not only across technology solutions and across industry, but just globally. Uh, we'll talk about dynamics for retail more specifically, um, especially the most recent release uh, that we have in the market. Um, we'll talk about the R3 launch, some of the new feature functionality, and then actually get into a demonstration of some of the, the new features and new capabilities. Uh, but before we, we fully jump in, I, I want to start, you know, based on, well, maybe a show of hands. How many people were in the, uh, the keynote this morning? Wow, good. good. So if you were there, um, you saw Delta Airlines, the example that we used. And um, it was really, I, I think, an interesting example and a very compelling example of how they're using technology to transform their in-cabin experience. And um, I actually had firsthand experience with that on my way here to Atlanta from Seattle, uh, I was fortunate enough to be upgraded to business class, and any of you who have been in business class know that seats have about 500 different adjustments, lots of movements. So I, I went to adjust my seat, and it just kept going forward and forward and forward. And pretty soon, as I'm pinned up against the front, um, being 6'3 and a half roughly, uh, I realized none of the buttons were working, and I was stuck. Um, so the flight attendant comes by, and she gives me kind of a strange look. You know, sir, why do you find that to be a comfortable position? Which I didn't. Uh, they quickly realized that they were going to have to extract me from the seat or at least help me get out. And, and long story short, they ended up having to take me out of the seat. They had to disassemble the seat. I learned everything there is to know about how to manually adjust a first class seat in uh, Delta Airlines. But what was more interesting is they had the Dynamics point of sale, the mobile device there um, that's on every aircraft. And it was amazing for me to see how many different ways they were using it. They were calling up to the cockpit. Uh, to call down to the maintenance staff so they could figure out how to save this, this sad man from his predicament. They were looking up manuals on the device. Uh, they were trying to sell me my favorite bourbon so that I could pretend I wasn't pinned up in an awkward position. Uh, and then ultimately, by the end of that experience, about an hour and a half later, they were able to scan my boarding pass, get up my loyalty status as a medallion member, and then credit SkyMiles to my account right there by my side. Uh, as I was trying to untwist myself and unsprain my neck and all those good things. But it was, it was actually a really good experience because they had um, the ability to be, you know, having communication, to be trying to solve the problem, to troubleshoot and do all kinds of different things. And it's, to me, a really powerful example of how mobility is transforming experiences. Uh, in this case, you know, in a cabin at 30,000 feet, and as you saw this morning, uh, Malia discussed, you know, 500 miles an hour, and it really is interesting how that technology is taking businesses forward. So that, that's part of why I'm excited, not just about what we're doing in retail, but about Microsoft, because we do have higher aspirations. We're not just building featured solutions. We're not just selling you a product. We as a company are looking to uh, change the way that people use software, not just from a platform perspective, but in terms of business applications. Um, so now I'm going to you know, go through a video that I think really exemplifies a lot of what Microsoft is about. And it's important to keep that context as we go through this because Microsoft is looking to do more when it comes to transforming the way people use software. What is technology? What can it do? 
when I lost my eyesight, I thought that my painting days were over. How far can we go? By using your hands, you can actually control your x-ray. Technology has the power to unite us. Hang on, honey. Hang on. There he is. You see him? I can see him. It inspires us. Technology has taken us places we've only dreamed. Now I can do whatever I want. It gives hope to the hopeless. Can you hear me talking? <laughs> and it has given voice to the voiceless. And many of you may have seen that, uh, that video as it played uh, first at the Super Bowl. Um, but that's why I'm excited every day to come to work at Microsoft, because we're not the average business solutions company. We're not out there trying to figure out how to update a 20-year-old roadmap. Microsoft does aspire to be more, and that also applies to business applications. It applies to how you as customers and for partners in our audience are going to change the world in the way that you engage customers, in the way you build loyalty, in the way you take your business forward. And I think that's what's exciting to me is that when you partner with someone, you're not just buying a product, you're investing in a long-range, long-term partnership. And you heard that theme, whether it was Chobani, whether it was Delta Airlines, these are customers that see us as their trusted advisor going forward. And I think it's because they're seeing the way the market is headed and, and what we're trying to do to impact it. And when you think about a connected world, the, the, the data really is staggering. I mean, five billion gigabytes of data collected every 10 minutes. You know, and trying to put how much data is out there into context, um, if you think about you know, a gigabyte, most of us can you know, understand what that means. You know, a terabyte is 1,000 gigabytes. A zettabyte is a billion terabytes, a billion with a B. The internet, which was about half a zettabyte in 2009, is now four zettabytes. That's enough data to wrap around this earth multiple times over. And they anticipate that by the year 2018, the internet will have doubled in size again to eight zettabytes. That's enough data for every man, woman, and child on this earth to have their own terabyte hard drive. That's how much data is out there. So this is where you think about how do you make sense of it all and how do you leverage that insight, that information to your advantage and how do you work with technology solutions that are focused in that way. And then you look at all the new people, two billion new people who will be you know, coming into the world as customers with their disposable income, the way that social is being pervasively leveraged. It is a, a world that is growing at an exponential rate. It's a world with exponentially growing expectations. And so the, the tools and the technology that you choose to use do matter. And this slide has been shown, I'm sure, in other, other places, but it's particularly relevant in, in retail because of the fast changing nature of the business. But when you think about the average longevity of a business and just reemphasizing the point, uh, by the year 2020, 75% of all businesses in the S&P 500 will simply not be there anymore. And it's because technology will become uh, something that paralyzes them, that, that keeps them from being able to move forward because they won't be able to adapt to the way the customers expect engagement. They won't be able to use technology in the right way to innovate and to differentiate their business. And this is something that Kirill talked about this morning, the era of the customer, and it bears repeating because we know when it comes to loyalty, 96% um, of customers don't complain, 91% um, simply never come back, uh, and, and the experience does matter, and we know that people will pay more for a better customer experience. This is why you hear the terms omnichannel and mobility and all of these buzzwords throughout the industry because that's what takes you forward, but it's not about, about the what, it's about the how. How do you deliver those things? Because everyone's going to talk about it. Our CEO Satya Nadella said, you know, in a cloud-first, mobile-first world, everyone's going to have similar messages because everyone gets that it's important, but it's, it's gotta be more than just getting it. You've gotta be able to deliver it. And that's why retailers are under such an intense pressure to build lasting loyalty that's for a lifetime, to be able to provide the types of customer service levels um, that are memorable, to be able to connect with your customers across any channel and provide the right types of employee productivity. So this is what they're thinking about today. So again, technology can, can impact this today, but then there's also what is going to be expected tomorrow. And when you pick a partner and you pick a solution, it can't just be about solving the problem of today. It's gotta be technology that can take you forward for the next 10 or 15 years. 
where mobility is no longer the exception, it's the rule. And when we think about things like social curation, that's sort of the next buzz term, that's being able to take inputs from social media, feedback that you're seeing on the Facebook and the Twitter from your customers, and have it in real time directly impact replenishment, assortment, the way that you move goods and items into a physical store location. Um, that is, again, where we're headed. You know, the idea of beacon technology, low frequency sound, being able to send a promotion to someone simply because they're within proximity of your retail location. That's, that's not something you can start thinking about today and solve for tomorrow. These are things that Microsoft has been uh, working on for years. And our retail experience center that we have in Redmond, we bring people through, and, and Delta this morning talked about how that trip into our retail experience center was the first time that they were starting to imagine what was possible. And that was you know, years ago. And now today, they are, they are live with 20 plus thousand flight attendants. And when we think about things like an infinite canvas, it's no longer a device. It's a phone one minute, it's a tablet the next, it's a desktop the next. It's being in a store, suspending a transaction on one device, moving it to another, flipping it to the store down the street, going back into the cloud. It's, it's one experience, regardless of device, and it is an infinite canvas. And we know, and this statistic is fairly new, 63% of retailers now realize and are saying that they need a centralized unified commerce engine to run their business. There's a problem. If you're not using Microsoft Dynamics Retail, that doesn't exist because we are the only vendor in the world that currently offers a single unified commerce transaction engine that can run any channel of your business. You create a promotion once, a discount once, a tax scheme once, it lights up your website, your brick and mortar store, it lights up your social network, all of that in a single experience. If you go to Oracle, they'll, they'll talk about Omnichannel and they'll give you five different commerce engines that you have to work within to achieve the same result. Or if you go to a best of breed software provider, they'll give you their commerce engine and then tell you to go connect it through middleware and data transformation to all the other commerce engines that you already have in your ecosystem. But we also know that you can't do it all at once. So we allow third party solutions to seamlessly plug in to our commerce engine as well. We're also the only company that does that. So our whole mission is to make it simple, to make it omni-channel, and to make it on your terms. And, and again, that's where picking the right solution provider is, is just as important as picking the right solution. So when we say what our omni-channel vision looks like, connected, relevant, and ready, it's, it's more than just marketing. So connected, you have the world's only single omni-channel commerce engine that you can use as the heart of your business. Plugging it into third-party systems, you can plug into SAP, you can plug into Oracle, you can complement existing technologies, or like some of our great customers, you know, Ashley Furniture or others that are going to do a complete business transformation, leveraging everything end to end, you can use the full power of the Microsoft stack. Relevant, you know, you saw some of that this morning and you'll see more of it today. It's the idea of role-based interfaces that increase speed of service and lower training times and increase productivity because it's making the solution relevant. You see the numbers with Dynamics that the, the adoption of our software is the highest in the industry because people recognize it, they're familiar with it, and it's optimized for them. And then ready is simply about being ready to take your business forward. What does upgradability look like? What does enterprise manageability look like? What does the underlying platform mean in terms of total cost of ownership? With limited IT dollars and all of the discussions happening, should, should more go to the CMO, should it stay with the CIO, you know that you'll have more dollars to stretch across more parts of your business with Microsoft Dynamics. And then finally, our holistic perspective. You know, the idea that we ourselves are a retailer, and we'll talk in one of our other sessions more about the Microsoft stores and the growth and the explosion and the size, but that we're dealing with customers ourselves every day and that our R&D team is deeply embedded with everything going on in our own stores where we've been running mobility, where we think about security and payments and encryption and what it means to run a holistic operation. The hardware that we're offering with Surface and with Nokia as the only vendor that has our own retail business, our own mobile hardware, and our own enterprise global uh, business applications. So again, it's, it's a unique but also a complete 360 degree view of the business. And then to further on that theme of investment protection, we use Dynamics ourselves, not because it's Microsoft's own solution. When you're a $70 billion company, uh, you don't have the option of saying, you know what, Dynamics, we're going to use it because you're part of Microsoft. It's too mission critical, it's too important, and the success of Microsoft and too many other businesses matters. That's why Dynamics is counted on to run all of our Xbox manufacturing. That's why it runs all of our MBS order processing, all of our expense reporting for soon to be 120,000 employees, all of our data center, our Salesforce automation, our retail operations. 
So when you buy Dynamics, you're not buying a solution that may go away a year from now. You're not buying a solution that may be acquired and simply disappear. You're buying a solution that's mission critical to one of the largest technology companies on the planet, one that's being used by our own retail stores to compete with Apple in, in a very contentious battle, and then also across over 45 countries around the world where people are now deploying Microsoft Dynamics. Localized for 36 markets, being sold and being deployed in over 45 countries, we are selling four licenses for every one of our next closest competitor. We are the fastest growing retail solution in the world. We are the most widely available end-to-end -end retail solution in the world. Our license and growth is in the triple digits. We're the fastest growing business application inside of Microsoft. And so all of those facts and figures, they matter because that's why we keep continuing to see the investment and all the innovation that you're going to see when we get to the product demonstration. And you'll, you'll see things when we talk about end-to-end -end, not just at the store level, where we'll show you modern point of sale and what modern POS and experiences on phones and tablets looks like, but the complete experience, e-commerce, warehouse travel, transportation, logistics, orders and merchandising, customers of ours like Carrefour that you know, are transforming many parts of their business using capabilities around omni-channel order management, and then catalog and call center. So when we say omni-channel, we offer every channel. We offer the complete solution. And you see that here. When we started five years ago, um, there were bits of this, there were pieces of this. This was always the vision. And with this most recent release, we are fully delivering on this complete picture. And again, let me reiterate that there are a lot of best of breed players that offer good solutions in the market. There's other competitors, you know, like SAP and Oracle that are trying different approaches at this through acquisition. We are the only vendor on a single technology stack, a single set of business rules, a single data model built from the ground up by Microsoft that is delivering this, but also allowing you the choice to put in just mobile point of sale like a Delta Airlines or just the omni-channel order management or the complete end-to-end -end experience. So this is really the culmination of this vision, and it's important to note that you know, we're talking about five years. We're not talking about the 20, 25 plus years that many of our competitors have been in the market and are still trying to get here. And it also bears mentioning, because you saw a lot of this today in the keynote, that marketing and customer care are absolutely a fundamental part of our strategy. We think about a customer interaction as being commerce, marketing, and customer care. And you saw the great assets that we have there that are absolutely part of the vision and the strategy about what we're doing in retail and commerce. Um, so we have a holistic view of how you can nurture the customer, you can engage the customer, and you can build loyalty with them on an ongoing basis. So this is the picture, this is the solution, and ultimately that ties back to things we're doing with enterprise manageability, the devices and, and experiences, and that's important because with us being now a devices company, the same consumer uh, look and feel, the aesthetics, the great looking phones and tablets, we can marry those very seamlessly with what are enterprise grade solutions that are built to scale into the thousands of stores and thousands of users. You know, as we said, uh, when you think about mobility, Beyond what we've done in our own Microsoft stores, Delta is running across over 700 aircraft. Um, now the number is well over 20,000 devices. And that's something that matters when you think about picking a solution that can be managed efficiently over such a large footprint. And finally, you know, touching on this is important, enterprise-grade security and manageability uh, in a world where, and, and you've all seen the headlines, the challenges that people now have with data breaches um, with security, especially in a mobile world with the way payments are being handled, the cloud, what does that all mean? Microsoft is the one company in the world that's investing more in R&D, in security, and the solutions were built from day one to be in the enterprise. Uh, you see the, the, the experiments going on with iOS and Android, um, you know, and as I, you know, my favorite joke these days is that iOS was built more for Angry Birds than the enterprise. Many people don't realize that two weeks ago they had a security breach where every single iOS device on the planet was at massive risk for your data and all of your secure information being completely visible to anyone who wanted it. The reason that it didn't make a lot of headlines is because iOS simply isn't a player in the enterprise and never will be. And I feel confident making that statement because they didn't build it for the enterprise. There are too many things that are going to matter to these large companies. Android's a whole other story, with 75% of all those devices being open source, completely unmanageable, and Google having no ability to help those customers even if they wanted to. So Windows is absolutely going to win in the enterprise. That's, that's not even a question. It's a question of who's building applications that best leverage Windows and best leverage the complete solution set. And that's where Dynamics, 
uh, becomes a very powerful part of a complete message and a complete story. And so with that, uh, I'm going to turn things over to Ashvin Matthew, who's going to get a little bit deeper into the product and solution itself. Thank you, Michael. So I wanted to spend a little time to go a little deep into probably what the solution is. You know, the trends that you see are being, you know, addressed by having a very robust uh, solution behind it, and that is the architecture. You've seen the slide before, but there's a, a couple of new additions, uh, if you notice the M-commerce piece and the call center piece. But to give you a complete overview, when we've looked at retail and commerce, we wanted to build, and we embarked on this journey about four years back, we knew we wanted to build a solution that addressed all the various channels and did it right. So we took the time to build it over a period of five releases, and I'll go into the, uh, those releases in a, future, in a different slide. But what we wanted to do was to make sure you had a solution that could, if you wanted to, do all parts of what you needed to do in a retail enterprise, everything from corporate operations to, of course, big data and BI, uh, the ability to mine that data, and then, of course, the ability to do your financials. But more importantly, even deal with everything from manufacturing to your supply chain to be able to run your distribution networks. And then as you went closer and closer to the final customer, the ability to do everything around customer loyalty, the ability to do customer relationship management within the solution. Of course, also leveraging, if you wanted to, uh, the CRM product to do additional um, segmentation and categorization of those customers in order to reach uh, out to them through marketing. And then as you went closer into the products, the ability to do merchandising and, of course, pricing promotions, the ability to run multiple catalogs, the ability to enrich those catalogs, and then, of course, ultimately be able to take those products uh, and push them to the multiple channels. We started off, of course, with the store, you know, having both the store systems, and we've continued to evolve those store systems, but importantly, in the last few releases, have added e-commerce and e-commerce in a broad sense, you know, not just the ability to have a storefront, multiple storefronts, but more importantly, being able to connect through our marketplace provider interface into multiple, um, both social search and other marketplaces, which could be third-party marketplaces. So a very robust architecture, right, taking what would be the problems of tomorrow and basically saying, let's put together an architecture that allows you to solve that. And then, of course, in this release, we've gone one stage further and we've known that mobility is important. So we've taken the retail server and added to it the multiple retail surfaces on mobile devices, things like tablets, uh, phones, and, of course, the ability to connect even normal PCs to that. And then also adding the notion of a call center and catalog sales uh, so the ability to run an organization, the ability to uh, run organizations that span e-commerce where if a person puts in an order and needs to change something, uh, may want to call into a, a number and have the order changed. So the ability to do call center. With that, we've completed our solution. But if you notice one theme there, it is basically saying that we use a common commerce runtime, uh, the, uh, the CRT that you see there. That is quite unique to the dynamic solution. There is no solution out there today that uses the same runtime with the same rules if you chose to, uh, to execute across everything from mobile devices to e-commerce to your store to your call center. That's quite literally unique uh, in the industry. And the reason we did it is in some ways we were not um, you know, burdened by having 20 years of legacy to carry along like on our backs. What we did was we were able to invest enough to write from the very ground up uh, the CRT so that it would address all these multiple channels. And then, of course, keeping experiences, retail experiences across these multiple channels being very uh, core to what we believe in, we made sure those experiences not only stay with the business logic, but also um, you know, transcends into the actual retail experience across multiple surfaces. Uh, the ability to have multiple uh, experiences that transcend everything from, let's say, a mobile device back into the store or into the web or back into the call center and have that unifying fabric, both from a user experience point of view and also the business rules, right? So the ability to have a very robust architecture that supports all the trends that Michael talked about. And as we go into deeper into the solution, we have taken the time to also architect, and I won't spend too much time on this, just that we've built robust data delivery mechanisms that take into account the notion that you might have 
uh, surfaces that are both synchronous, that is, you might want to make calls that are synchronous if you have connectivity, but are also able to work in an offline mode asynchronously. So the ability to have true mobility, the ability to go offline if you needed to, for example. Uh, so very robust architecture in how we support mobility, the ability to have, for example, your e-commerce website you know, continue to operate even if your back-end systems um, you know, are taken off for maintenance, for example. Those are all very powerful concepts, and we've actually gone and architected it so that you can decide to do certain operations when your back-end systems are offline and certain that you, know, you may decide you're not going to allow. For example, the ability to deduct loyalty points because you don't want someone uh, you know, using their loyalty points more than once. So the ability to partition the data, very robust with respect to how we've looked at the architecture, and then the ability, of course, to support uh, all the multiple uh, channels. And then if you go deeper into the commerce runtime, even the commerce runtime, we've built it with both future, the future in mind and the ability to modularize your functionality. So we've, the commerce runtime is composed of about 30 plus different service modules, each of which can be either replaced or modified uh, but more importantly, is also localized in those 36 different geos that we localize into, right? So a robust architecture that's also then put together with a workflow engine, which allows you to orchestrate among these various, um, uh, various modules. To give you an example, for example, in the Microsoft Store, we work very closely with the Microsoft Store. They are our test bed. Uh, they are our guinea pigs in some ways, you know. Uh, there's a saying in Microsoft where we say we eat our own dog food. So in some ways, our Microsoft store eats our dog food. So we work very closely with them. One of the uh, situations they face is you can walk into a Microsoft store, buy a laptop, decide what software you're going to put on that laptop, and have all of that software activated. Oftentimes, the software that's activated there, for example, may be activated with different software providers. Now, that's not something I have in the commerce runtime, but we have an ability to plug in a plug-in module which does software activation that is then orchestrated to the Windows workflow engine of the commerce runtime. That can be done on the web, too. We're using exactly the same logic. It shows the power of architecting uh, the solution right. Uh, the other example would be you walk into a Microsoft store and want to activate a phone that is being sold on behalf of AT&T in Microsoft Store, in which case you have to do the actual cell phone activation. That gets done through a module, which is then plugged into the workflow, which allows you to activate as a part of the purchase that phone. And then, of course, the ability to do both have a presentation layer, so we can, we can operate both in the, pre, uh, in the mode where you have actually either a tablet or a physical device, which is a presentation that is a UI in front of it, or you could uh, do that with a service interface, which is what we do with the retail server. And so in this release, we are introducing the notion of a retail server. We've taken the entire commerce runtime. We've wrapped that workflow uh, using OData and REST APIs, which then allow you to call uh, the uh, retail server through a very thin client. Now, that thin client could be actually a native client that runs on a phone. It could be a client that runs on a tablet. Or more importantly, you can use, um, you know, similar to what we do on our phone and tablet devices, HTML, uh, JavaScript and CSS in order to write an entire new client or experience. So what we have done is we've kind of abstracted the notion of running bus your business logic and how you surface that business logic in a user experience. So the ability to now go beyond just a POS or a phone POS into actually rich uh, client experiences. The ability, for example, if you chose to uh, on... Um, you know, a wall-mounted device to actually have an uh, interaction that ends up in a, uh, in a transaction. You know, very uh, cool uh, um, uh, user experiences that we can enable. I won't go uh, deep into this, but just, again, to reiterate the point, we are built on a very modular architecture that allows you to expand the solution as you grow with the business, as, as your business grows, and so the solution can keep up with you. It is written to be seamless, but actually is written in a way that is layered and modular so you can modify it over time and still preserve the independence. And then, of course, as we go into mobility, we completely standards-based using JavaScript, uh, HTML5. So when you use our tablet and our modern clients, they're all based on HTML and CSS. They are cross-platform, so we've written it in such a way that, you know, I'll take, uh, if you want to run it on the Angry Birds OS, you can do that too. So the ability to actually support more than Windows as a platform comes as a part of that uh, uh, client architecture. 
And so with that, hopefully you get what you get is, and you can investigate this in some of the other sessions that we have uh, at Convergence, is that Dynamics for Retail is based on a very modern architecture that is written in a modular form so that you can have the seamless retail experiences across multiple channels. With that, I'll go a little bit more deeper into both how we have evolved the solution and the specific you know, investments we've made in R3. Dynamics for Retail, we started literally four years back, and it's been quite a uh, ride. We've been very agile in how we put out things, very proud about how the team has executed. We started in, with 2009 R1, you know, putting the foundation for, uh, uh, for the solution in our industry, that is the stores management and the POS. We quickly evolved uh, in order to uh, build some of the, um, you know, right concepts with respect to, for example, the sales order and ability to perf and, you know, improve the perf and scale. And then with 2012, we added, started adding quite rapidly a lot of channels, right? Things like, for example, advanced merchandising, customer orders in order to support multiple both, uh, what I would say, business users as well as normal consumers, uh, the ability to take the commerce runtime and evolve it beyond uh, what we had in the normal POS and store uh, solution. And then with R2, we, of course, added our e-commerce functionality and actually made the CRT into a concept that could be used across multiple channels because now we are going beyond store into e-commerce. And then, of course, in this release, we're adding now mobility and call center and then now starting to uh, build even a client architecture which then allows you to innovate those uh, in the user experience uh, arena. Uh, if you look at the broad uh, six pillars we've added in this release, uh, you know, mobility and retail server, we've added a huge amount of capabilities around catalog, uh, and then we have enhanced our e-commerce and social functionality, and then we have added a lot into what we call core retail operations, everything on how you manage both multiple channels as well as things like more advanced pricing and promotion and so on and so forth. And then we've also taken one step and basically said, if you wanted to do a rapid deployment of Dynamics for Retail, what would you need to do? And we've come up with this concept called Retail Essentials, which actually takes just the basic things that you need to do in a retail operation and packaged it as a configuration option that allows you to do a rapid deployment. Because one of the, um, one of the issues we were starting to face with all of this um, uh, functionality we were adding into the solution that you know, the solution was becoming quite big and massive in order to deploy it needed a lot of expertise. So we've built retail essentials which allows us to do that and also then take it further down market. And then, of course, enterprise manageability, which we take quite seriously, ability to support N-1 uh, versions and uh, also the ability to manage of all of these mobile clients and scenarios that you have. I'll not spend too much time onto it, just the, uh, you know, a quick uh, you know, call through through some of the major uh, features. So we have in mobility, as I said, retail server. We'll be adding uh, the phone client, the tablet client, We'll be adding a lot of store operations now into the uh, mobile client. So the ability to do actual things like store reports, the ability to do, uh, you know, for example, uh, stock counts and things like that on a mobile client will be added in this release. And then, of course, in e-commerce and social, we've added both the ability to have multiple templates, including a fashion template, uh, the ability to do, for example, lists and gift cards across all channels, the ability to initiate them even in the e-commerce channel, and then, of course, uh, additional capabilities around Facebook and Twitter campaigns. And then we have added the notion of catalogs, virtual catalogs. So now not only can you in the POS be able to use a catalog, the catalog that's been published to the store, but also look at virtual catalogs which may span other stores as well as your entire enterprise. So the ability to use actually your tablet and phone as a selling for not only the items that you sell in the store, but across your enterprise. And then as we go into you know, the retail functionality, we've added kitting, a huge ask over the past few convergences from you. We've added additional pricing and promotions, uh, the ability to do better assortment and catalog, um, um, uh, catalog uh, functions, and then, of course, global gift card and loyalty. And then retail essentials, as I mentioned, easy setup. So we've uh, followed a wizard way of setting up a store, so you can actually set up a store template using a wizard and then use it for rapid deployment of store, which we know is very uh, crucial when, when uh, enterprises are 
pushing out a large number of stores uh, in a short period of time. And then simplified area pages in order to make it easier for your retail um, users to use the solution. And then, of course, the ability to migrate data. So we've added a lot of uh, data migration tools which allow you to take, use a schema and pull in data from uh, uh, data sources, for example, a pre-existing solution that you might have. So therefore, aiding in the migration. And then, of course, manageability, everything from uh, upgrade to large-scale deployments. We have added SCOM and uh, SCCM uh, in order to make it easier to manage. And we're adding to our PowerShell uh, scripts so that you can do, actually, deployments independent of uh, system centers. So we're adding to the capabilities of not only looking at how you might use the solution, but deploy it in a much more uh, uh, easy way. With that, I'll ask Jeff uh, uh, to come and show you some of the capabilities, especially around mobility and uh, the retail server. Thanks, Thanks Ashvin. Okay. Uh, first, I'll apologize that I'm going to be facing the wall instead of facing you. Um, I'll try to do my best to, to look over and make sure that you're at least paying attention. Um, but um, you know, Ashvin set it up great, and he talked about a lot of the big investments that we're making in, in R3 release. Um, and probably you know, one of the most exciting um, to talk about are the, the new clients that utilize retail server. Uh, so new clients being um, the, the tablet client, the phone client. Um, are thin clients that utilize retail server and the CRT for all of its business rules and data access. Uh, so I'm just going to take you through some of the basics. We do have additional sessions throughout the week if you wanted to know more about these clients and see some of the additional capabilities. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and log in. Um, you can see it's really um, colorful and vibrant. This is all completely themable and skinnable. Um, a lot of it um, is done just completely out of the box. So through configuration, you can change the look and feel and the behavior of the applications. Um, and then the rest could be done um, through customization. So through the extensibility model, you can build on top of it or, or change uh, larger portions of it. I'm just going to go ahead and log in as a cashier user. Um, I'm running it in an emulator. So you can imagine I'm, I'm running this on a tablet. Um, we'll tend to call this the mobile client. Um, but it's not necessarily it doesn't have to be the mobile client. This can be run um, as a traditional point of sale behind the cash wrap as well. Um, so now that I log in, uh, the new concept that we've, that we've introduced here is something that we're calling the welcome screen. And what this does is it allows you to surface all of that role-based capability and functions um, right when the user logs in. Um, so in, if you're familiar with Enterprise Pause, it goes directly into the transaction screen, um, which is great to get up and running and selling quickly. But sometimes a, a user, especially say a manager or a stock clerk, someone that doesn't necessarily uh, cashier very often, um, is kind of thrown into a UI that's, that's maybe not optimized for their role. And so we take role-based operations and functionality very seriously, and that's where the welcome screen comes in. Um, so I'm logged in as a cashier now, and I've got a kind of a basic welcome screen with some of the, the cashier tasks that I might have here. Um, this is all configured in the back office through AX. It's pushed down to the channels um, using CDX, um, and then uh, it accesses that data through the retail server and CRT. Uh, I'll go into the, to the sales screen here. Now, this is more of the traditional point of sales screen that you might be thinking, um, very touch optimized. In this case, it's one layout that's, that's designed for a cashier. Uh, so as you're maybe familiar with the enterprise pause, one of the strengths of the solution is that the user, user interface is all data driven. So it's metadata that's defined in the back office and pushed out to the channels. And that's the same thing here that we have. Uh, so this is, again, this is one example of a user interface for a cashier. If I log out and log back in as the manager, It's a little bit subtle that you'll see, but now the, the manager has some additional manager operations that the cashier didn't have before. Um, and then when I go into my point of sale screen here, it's a different layout. You know, just, to, just to show visually that things can go to the right, to the left, the content can change, um, the color schemes can change, all of that can change based on your, based on your role. I'm going to go ahead and do a, a simple transaction here. So if I had a scanner hooked up, obviously I could just scan the the product in. If I know the number, I can add in that number. It'll, it'll add the, the, the product directly to the sale. Uh, I can do a search from here as well. So if I wanted to search for, say, laptops in my electronics store, uh, I do a search, and I can get my search results back. You can view this in, say, a list view, or you can actually even toggle this into view uh, small cards or large cards. Um, depending on, on the product information, how visual it is, it might be better to be uh, a better experience to use um, larger images to be able to find the information that you're looking for. And I can select this product. 
and add it to the sale through search as well. Here it's a variant product, so it's asking me which color that I'd like it to be. Um, and then you can also browse. So this is a new experience that we're adding in through um, more of the clienteling aspect. So if you think of um, taking the cashier, the cashier out from behind the cash wrap, um, putting them out on the sales floor where they can work with the customers, um, they can now have a browsing experience as if they're browsing through a catalog that they might be doing at home online uh, or through a printed catalog. There's no reason why you can't have that same experience in the store as well. Um, so here I can go in and I can browse my products. Um, Ashvin mentioned before that uh, we now have the capability of not only browsing my own store's products, but because it's an omni-channel solution, I can browse products in other stores, um, or I could even browse all products. Now these would be all products that would be available to me. Maybe they're custom order or special order. Uh, they're not in my assortment, but I could still get them for you if I need to. Uh, we can browse all products, which actually makes real-time calls back into AX to be able to get that information. Uh, if I wanted to look at other stores, I can use our... It uh, looks like I might have a little bit of a Bing issue here, or a demo data issue. Let's see if my connectivity is working. Okay, so I can search for um, different stores, and if I had multiple stores in that region, I could choose which stores I'm looking for. It could be based on the store's address. Uh, maybe if I've got a customer on this sale, I want to find a customer that, uh, a store near that customer's address. Uh, I could choose that as well. So I could find uh, center that map on the on the customer's address. Browsing the products in your own store, we actually have uh, multiple catalog support here, too. So if you have seasonal catalogs, so it might be a holiday catalog or a back-to-school catalog or the spring catalog, uh, or it could be a promotional catalog. It could be just a, the, the, the weekly flyer that comes out um, that has all your promotional products. Um, you can have multiple catalogs that you can browse through. Or again, you can just browse through your, your base assortment. You can browse through all products that are available at this store. And now here we have that, that user interface um, that you're kind of used to looking at um, and being able to browse through the various categories so we can define navigational category hierarchies to be able to group these products together. Uh, if I want to look at my digital cameras, I can drill down through the categories. Uh, I can actually multi-select. So if I'm looking at, maybe I'm, I'm out on the sales floor and I'm working with the customer, they're not sure which camera it is that they want to buy, I can bring up information about these. So I can, I can pick more than one and I can choose to compare them. And now I can get side-by-side -side comparisons. Uh, all of the metadata about these products is also, it's data from the back office that's pushed out to all of the channels. So you can actually do channel-specific data, or the data can be shared across all channels. So I can look at how many megapixels or how much memory something has or, or um, any of the different specs that could be there. Let's say this is the product that I want to choose. I can add my product into the, into the transaction this way as well. Um, now it's time to pay. I can swipe my card. I can configure my layout to have a bunch of uh, quick buttons for my most common payment methods. Uh, or I could go in to view the, the whole host of payment methods that might be available at this store. And again, this is all configurable from the back office. It's all channel specific. Uh, and here I'm just going to go ahead and quickly pay for this one with cash. Now, if I had a customer on the sale that had an email address already based on their preferences, we can automatically send them an email or we can send an email and print. Uh, in this case, it's an anonymous customer, but I still have the opportunity to capture that email address if I wanted to. Um, so the, the, the new clients, as Ashwin mentioned, aren't just point of sale. Um, so we, we focus on point of sale. We focus on clienteling. Um, but like I mentioned before, not every user in the store is a cashier. Not every user's primary tasks are selling. Uh, so if I go back out into my welcome screen, you can see that this particular user has different tasks um, that are assigned to them. Um, here I could do uh, a stock count if I wanted to. So stock counts can be either scheduled from the back office, so if it could be like a cycle count, or if you're counting all products within a particular category or at your year-end physical inventory, that could all be managed from the back office or, and pushed down. Or I could just create an ad hoc count here at the store. And then just as if I'm selling, so I can use my existing hardware if I want to, I can scan or add products in. Typo. into the stock count, and I can enter the quantity. And then I can submit that back into the back office. I could just save it uh, and come back to it later. Uh, or I can commit this, and then that count becomes a counting journal within AX that can then be posted against it. And basic inventory tasks like counting, picking, receiving can all be done from within the mobile clients. And finally, what I want to show you here are the, the reports. 
Um, so the, the manager is often going to need to have information kind of at their fingertips without having to go into a different portal, uh, start up a different application, or maybe even have to go into the back room to be able to do that. So we have these kind of really quick, really visual reports um, that are all available to the, to the user within the mobile clients. So I can take a quick look here at maybe my top 10 products. I can specify my date range. I'm going to go back a ways to make sure I have some some data in here. And now I can view in a very visual way, um, both tabular and graphical, uh, what my, my top 10 products were over the last period. Or I could go back and I could choose to run uh, you know, what my busiest hours are for my store. So I can know if I need to staff up or maybe send some people home or something like that. Um, and all of these report definitions, like everything else, is all metadata. So this is all defined in AX. It's very simple um, XML that's defined and then pushed down to the stores. So if you wanted to add a new report or customize this report, you don't have to write code to do that. You don't have to deploy bits to do that. You can just simply push down a new report that's defined from the, within the back office. Switching over now to the phone. So I, I do have a, a physical phone here, um, but it seems like this is, uh, it's, it's better not to tempt the demo gods. So we're just gonna use the emulator on the phone as well. Um, so here, this is actually set up for a, a fashion retailer. You can see how easy it is to, to skin these. And I have to use the on-screen keyboard on this emulator. So now I'm gonna log into my fashion retailer. Different theme, different branding. I'm going to resume my shift. Uh, so we can, we can suspend and resume shifts across devices. Um, and with the, with the architecture slide that Ashvin brought out, uh, you can actually even use the modern clients and the enterprise pause in the same store. Uh, so I could actually start a transaction maybe on my phone, uh, but maybe I don't take cash on my phone. I'm not going to walk around with a cash belt or maybe the, the, the hardware station for the pay station is occupied. I can actually suspend this transaction on the phone, and then I can go and complete that at a different register. Um, so I'm going to go in and I'll start a new sale now on my phone. And through very similar experience, I can browse through my products. I can get into my coats and jackets here. And I can add a product into the sale. And choose its size, color, or style. And then I can check out on the phone as well. So here I'm going to just, again, I'm just going to do it as cash. I actually do have a credit card reader on my 1520 here, um, but we'll just do it as cash for this demonstration here. And again, same capabilities of being able to print and email receipts. And then also, again, it's not just a point of sale. Um, I can actually go back to my home screen, and I can get into my reports here as well. So those same reports that are available on the tablet are also available on my phone. I can view my top 10 reports on my phone as well. I can. So with that, we can come up for some Q&A. Yeah. So uh, we're ready to take questions, if there are any. Uh, there's a mic up there, uh, a couple of mics, uh, one in the back and one in the front. If you have questions, we're more than happy to. Michael, me, and Jeff can uh, take some of the questions. Sure, I'll repeat the question. Uh, the, pro uh, the product metadata, everything is uh, configured in the Dynamics uh, um, uh, backend. So you actually have a Dynamics AX. Uh, uh, Jeff, you can probably uh, quickly switch to the uh, AX mode. So we actually have Dynamics running in the backend. So that is our uh, HQ that manages all the channels. So everything from merchandising to even things like your definition of the UI, the screens are all done in the backend and then pushed using the commerce data exchange into the front ends. Right? So uh, you know, how, how do you do the definition of the layout? The actual product information. Yeah, so I think so yeah. this, this would be a, a start of it anyway. There's, there's multiple steps. 
Um, so this would be where you can define all the attributes. So all the metadata is all user definable. I believe we have some base attributes that are available out of the box to get you started. Um, but you can create attributes. Attributes have data types. And then attributes can go into groups to make them easier to manage. And then you assign those groups of attributes to products by category. So all cameras are going to have the, the attribute megapixel or something like that. Um, so actually, this, no, this is not new. Uh, the question was whether it's new in R3. Correct. No, we've had attributes and uh, rich uh, uh, metadata around products for a long time. The, any data that is present around products or for, like, for any, pro, uh, any, any information that's present in AX can be transferred over to the POS as a part of our commerce data exchange. If you notice, we had the real time and the asynchronous. So you can either do it in real time, you can call back into the system, or you can push it up front and it's either stored in the cache or uh, um, in the front end. Uh, there's another question here. So the question was, how are we pushing data uh, in the, uh, to the POS in R3? Uh, what we have done in R3 versus R2, uh, we've had them. Yeah. So uh, the R3 is we're actually using, we've rewritten our entire what used to be called Store Connect uh, use into something called Commerce Data Exchange. We actually use this HTTPS. So we're using internet protocols so you can actually write, um, you know, basically connect to an HTTPS port on the server and actually have the data pushed back and forth. Right, so we're using HTTPS and then we're using, uh, you know, data packets which are either delta, that is basically you've pushed a certain amount of information and only want to change the, uh, push over the changed information, or you can push the entire piece of data if you're setting up a new store, for example. So we have something called CDX. So one other thing to add to that that's also another big improvement in R3 is the change tracking has been completely redone. So in versions prior to R3, it was uh, kind of proprietary change tracking to know which data has changed so that we know to send it out to the stores. We now use SQL change tracking. So it's much more manageable. It's much more performant. Um, it's much more reliable. So in, in R3, moving forward, it's, it just uses base SQL change, management, uh, change tracking. So a question. Oh, uh, the question was if there was a single point of login uh, for base AX and the POS. No, we manage uh, the POS logins can be managed in the back end, but you log in as a separate, using separate credentials. And the reason for that is we don't require stores or, or any of the endpoints to be domain joined. You see, the reason we don't use AX credentials is AX is a domain joined credential, and we don't want to have uh, the requirement to have AD, Active Directory support, or domain joined uh, machines on the store. That is customizable, though. So yeah, you, you can... could choose to do that if you want to. So the, uh, the authentication there is, is um, extensible so that you could use Active Directory or some other method of, of uh, authentication. And as we go into mobile clients, for example, phones, uh, phones, it tends to be tough to get them to uh, be domain joined, right? So, I mean, by very nature, they tend to be mobile uh, roving. Uh, no, no not, not mm -hmm. in this release. It's something on our list. We've heard it before, um, but it, not, not in R3. Not on the POS, but in the back, yeah, okay. using AX client, yes. What is the roadmap? I think the commission. Sure. Uh, the question was, what is the roadmap for commissions, uh, you know, the retail scenario? Again, something that we have uh, as a feature functionality that we will consider in future releases. We haven't got to that quite yet. Yeah. So the roadmap for credit card processing. Evolving, uh, let me give you a little bit more context there. So we continue to support, of course, the ability to add credit card processing using the CRT, uh, you know, the payment module. So you can write the plugins there. But as you probably, if you, uh, if you noticed, we put out a press release at NRF about our relationship with Vantive. So one of the other things they're starting to do is to establish much more stronger relationship with payment processors in order to uh, do a couple of things. First thing is to give you choice with respect to an uh, easier way to implement. And the second thing is, as we go uh, into hardware, especially mobile hardware, we want the encryption of the credit card to happen between the actual hardware device 
and the Bayman processor, right? So uh, to increase the strength of, uh, you know, the encryption. So from a security perspective, too, we are looking at that. So the first, um, you, you can take it, the first uh, attempt was talking to Wantiv, and we'll start uh, increasing the number of relationships we have. And just uh, as an update, so what I've put up on the screen is uh, all of the other retail sessions that we're going to have throughout the week. So right after this, we've got another one where we'll be talking about a little bit more about the Vantif partnership and also about the uh, announcement we made with Sitecore in terms of our e-commerce strategy and partnership. And then as you can see, throughout the rest of the week, uh, a significant number of deep dive sessions where you know, some of the great things Jeff showed, you'll be able to see more around the clients the mobile experiences, everything around call center, systems architecture, back office, uh, really getting into the depth of what R3 is delivering. So definitely you know, look in your catalogs and make sure that you, uh, for, for those sessions that apply to you, you have those. Uh, and then the previous slide I had shown was, was a little bit more around some of our ways you can engage us uh, from a, a Twitter, Facebook, and a social perspective. Are there any other, any other final questions at all? Sure, there's one. Do we have any technology related roadmap for us? We have a customer who is on the AX 2009 and R2 is just completely totally changed in the database architecture and everything. So do we have Microsoft has any roadmap on this? Yeah. So the question was, was there a technology roadmap? And specifically here, the question was around 2009 and 2012. Uh, we normally, in a three-year cycle, tend to have major, uh, we, we tend to upgrade our technology platform with the latest. The answer is this. There are documents that... Um, uh, that kind of document all the changes between 2009 and 2012. Um, if you look around in our documentation, you'll find it referred to as product-wide features. They tend to be the features that we actually, either from a functional perspective or a pure uh, technology perspective, have upgraded between the two releases. Um, you should be able to, are you, are you a partner or a customer? Uh, you, you should find that, you should be able to find that in partner source. Uh, So there's, there's a couple of things we can talk. Um, I can point you to a couple of sources. There is actually tools which allow you to uh, even determine, for example, within, between your model files, uh, what are the changes and what you might need to do. Of course, they are only pointers to what you will have to go and do in your base solution to begin with. But there are some tools which allow you to figure out how and what to upgrade between the two versions. We do have uh, upgraded tools uh, available. Another question here. Do you have a roadmap for connecting to merchandising software, something like payment? Okay. So the question was, do we have uh, a roadmap, you know, kind of a guide to show how you can integrate with other merchandising software? I, 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 when you say spaceman, you're talking explicitly around. Uh, spaceman is a software that Neil can Yes. In order to utilize. Uh, yeah, the planograms, the, the planograms and stuff. Uh, the way we would recommend you do that is we have defined uh, um, interfaces, AIF interfaces, or uh, there's another um, 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 uh, Dynamics uh, integration framework interfaces uh, that you can actually use to pull out the data. Things like, uh, for example, the actual products, and even if you went even down to the assortment level, so you can decide in a store what is the assortment. So there are interfaces that you can use, XML interfaces, to pull out the data uh, as needed. So I think we have time for one more question, maybe. So the question was around hardware. Uh, do we have a certified solution with all the peripherals? The answer is no. We don't have a certified solution. So um, what we do have is there are a certain set of devices that we know we have tested our solution with, but they are not put together as a bundle. 
Now, we are starting, what we are starting to do, especially, for example, with uh, what we are going to do around mobile solutions with, for example, the payment provider, Vantive, is we will increasingly start working with those providers to have something close to what you say is a certified uh, uh, bundle. But right now, what we have is a set of devices that we have tested against, but we don't in any way you know, put a seal that says Microsoft certified. You know. Yeah, we, we, uh, Jeff, uh, you know, we can probably give you a rough list of uh, you know, what we have tested against or what we use in our test uh, labs. I think we'll be available. I, I see uh, the, there was a sign up that we got to leave right now. So what I'll do is we'll, Michael, me, and Jeff will be around here uh, to answer questions or we will uh, walk outside and take your questions too. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Have a great show. Thanks.